Hello again, uh, this is the uh, second video blog that I intend to do about my meningioma. First of all, can I start off by thanking the overwhelming response I've had on Facebook from friends and family uh, who have really been really supportive. It, it really does help in tricky situations. But the purpose of the, of the whole video blog is just to bring people's attention to the fact that uh, meningiomas exist without sometimes without us knowing them and it's important as, as I mentioned to a colleague on uh, Facebook it's important that we people that are self-employed particularly the self-employed people understand that if you're not feeling very well it's no good sitting back and thinking I can't afford to take time off work because it could have a longer lasting uh, almost fatal effect upon the rest of your life. So really this is about uh, the symptoms that I, I've i suffered and I just want to bring them to the attention of uh, the people out there who may have suffered similar symptoms so you can go and do something about it. I've also been advised that if you do want to do something about the symptoms I'm about to explain you've got to be really insistent to your surgery and to your doctors and to your medics that you want an MRI scan, really, really insistent. Anyway, the, the, the primary uh, symptom, if you like, was confusion and inability to communicate. And it was a bit bizarre scenario because, as I mentioned uh, on the last blog, about four months after my heart attack, four or five months after, I had an episode when I was actually in Crown Court, in Bolton Crown Court, in front of his Honour Judge Tim Clayson, who was extremely good about the whole thing, uh, where I got to my feet. My, I was defending at the time. My client had just been acquitted, pretty much against the odds, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, and I got to my feet after his acquittal to address the judge on an issue, and uh, I couldn't speak. I was just frozen. And if you've ever experienced that moment where you just cannot communicate, communicate, you just cannot say the words that you want to say, then it's an indication that uh, something is not quite right. And sometimes it, it, it reoccurred, this particular uh, symptom reoccurred a number of occasions. And sometimes you feel like you're in a room and people are speaking to you, but in a completely different language, in a language you don't understand. You know, some of us have a basic grasp of French or Italian or or uh, German or whatever it might be, some Latin-based language, but this is almost as though somebody's speaking to you in Norwegian or Danish. You just have no idea what they're saying. Um, so I didn't suffer the symptoms of headaches. It was confusion and inability to communicate. So if you have ever suffered that moment where you just cannot get your words out, you cannot say anything, you have to sit down and calm yourself, then there is a remote chance, uh, and it's no more than that, that you may have something wrong. There may be a meningioma. The meningioma I have, I'm very, very fortunate. My uh, surgeon has told me, I've, I've spoken to my surgeon, and he's told me that if, I'm, if you're going to get a tumour of the brain, this is the best one to have, uh, because it sits between the skull bone and the dura or the membrane that covers the brain. So it's a matter of extracting it once they've removed this part of the skull in a nice circular piece on my left hand side here. Once they've done that, they then remove the uh, meningioma, the tumour itself, without having to, fingers crossed at least, without having to touch the brain. But anyway, more importantly, the symptoms, confusion, inability to communicate, an element of forgetfulness, feeling, knowing that I knew that where I was, I, I knew exactly where I was and where I was present. I just could not speak any words at all. I couldn't say anything. And that lasted for about a minute, two minutes at most, something like that. And that's why it had the symptoms of the TIA, a, a mini stroke in other words. Um, the other difficulty was, because of the heart attack that I had in June, um, the medication I was on, I thought it was a side effects of the medication, which is why I went back to see the cardiologist, 
who then referred me on to the neurologist, who then referred me on to an MRI scan. So they knew deep down that something was wrong. But if you've experienced any of those symptoms, and uh, please, 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 I beg you, get in touch with your surgery, go and see a doctor, and insist that something is done about it. Don't sit back and think it's going to get better, because uh, trust me, it won't. Anyway, look, look, that's five minutes. That's all I want to say tonight. Thanks again for your overwhelming support, people that have telephoned me, people that have messaged me. I really do truly, truly much appreciate it. Uh, and that's it for tonight. And there'll be a further block on the effects of the uh, meningioma probably tomorrow or the day after. So many thanks. Bye.